speaking of it, you, you were kind of mentioning these sophisticated tools of analysis. Well, there are some stories that we can get to the bottom of without very sophisticated tools or even minds which are very analytical. I think we were watching we a been... very, very special segue happen. Right? <laughs> oh, we yeah, were watching a very special segue. And just you wait, guys. I almost stuck the landing and then you had to make fun of me. This book is more, just... book At more. the end of the show, right. please Eighth. rate his best segues and his worst segues. <laughs> we're we're going to make stamps. we're gonna make a time stamp. Exactly. <laughs> After the show, we're going to do a compilation of, of my best and worst uh, segues. Well, <laughs> I'll just drop the name of the story. I'll just drop the title of the, the article here in the story we're going to talk about. Uh, U.S. funded scientists were among three Chinese researchers who fell ill amid the early COVID-19 outbreak. Identification of three who worked at Wuhan Institute of Virology fuels suspicion <laughs> for proponents of lab leak theory. That's quite an understatement. Uh, a a uh, prominent scientist who worked on coronavirus projects funded by the U.S. government, okay, do I have to keep reading, is one of three Chinese researchers who became sick with an unspecified illness during the initial outbreak of COVID-19. And let's keep it unspecified because I think the current poisoning. and former U.S. officials. So YouTube, maybe it's right? whatever Tim has. Yeah. Maybe someone else had to take over his podcast for a day. <laughs> I have no idea. But what I will say is this. We have had a number of conversations on this story about lab leak hypothesis versus the it came from a bat that lived a thousand miles away from where the virus first sprang up theory, which I guess a nickname we could give to that a shorthand. Stupid. The, the, the insane stretch. I, I, I don't know what else to call it. We have had conversations on this show about the fact that there are certain theories that we as the American people didn't have access to because information was withheld from us. This is an example of the American people having basically all of the facts that they needed to have to come to the correct conclusion very early on, but the media just continually gaslighting people about drawing the most obvious possible conclusion. The reason the term conspiracy theorist is so effective is because what it does is it generates an image in the mind of the person who hears that term of an individual who doesn't go for the most succinct, credible, reasonable, and simple explanation, but who instead will make any kind of logical leap or stretch to believe whatever it was they wanted to believe in the first place. Now, to me, that sounds a lot more like that description fits somebody who thinks that COVID sprang up in a population of bats that live a thousand miles away from Wuhan, as opposed to having come from the virus factory where they were doing gain of function <laughs> research in the city where the virus first sprang up. For our good. For our good. Okay. How and can you question science? We, I know, I know. And, and with, with details now emerging, I mean... I. I just have to laugh. I'm glad that this story came out. I'm glad that this was published. I think this is valuable information for the American people to have. Did we need this? Did we need this information to come to the most obvious possible conclusion here? Uh, well, I I think it is important that we start to find out Agreed. who's funded by the U.S. government, including mm -hmm. if Chinese researchers were being funded and getting sick. In were they working in the the COVID? Uh, factory, the uh, Wuhan Institute. Yeah, they were they COVID were working factory. at the the <laughs> Wuhan factory where they were working on COVID, and they got ill, being funded by U.S. government. I mean, it's the most obvious. It's it's insane. I think right? it's notable that it's coming from the Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. Right. This I, isn't a fringe group it's that's exactly this. exactly what I was thinking. Is that okay? Is this going to be another Fox head? Oh. No, it's not Wall Fox. Street Journal. It's yeah. not Newsmax. It's no one who. Also, who it's so frankly, it's I don't believe it. It's Wall Street Journal. I don't, but it's I don't not the Wall Street <laughs> Journal editorial page either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's no. it's the. They are presenting news it department. as fact. They mm -hmm. they feel as though they have the evidence to back this up. And I I can't speak specifically to the Wall Street Wall Street Journal, but most of these major mainstream outlets, we can kind of guess what their track record on this theory yes. is, where they cited. The fact that this is being reported, I mean, we are three years out. Some A lot of people's attitudes towards uh, the pandemic have really shifted, uh, but it's notable that... I I'm, I now am very pro. You, you're for it? <laughs> yeah, I think, you think it, it was a good time? It, it was a, changed your mind? Incredible. Incredible. Back you got to catch up. Yeah. Yeah. You got to work <laughs> out a lot. You're a bodybuilder now, right? That's, That's I mean, yeah. that actually yeah. might be what they try to... Con they, they might try to convince the American people to be in favor of it just so that they don't have to take accountability. Like, maybe this was a good... Th maybe we needed this We time all get to, to spend more time at home. Yeah. I don't think yeah. Fauci had enough medals. bodybuilder. Uh, no, but I, I think that's the thing you shake away. Yes, like you're saying, maybe we all already knew this information. Maybe this is drawing uh, forth a conclusion that a lot of us had already assumed. But the reason the answer to your question is no is is that read that last sentence. 
The identity and role of the researchers is one piece of intelligence that has been cited by proponents of the judgment that... <laughs> that's actually not very good writing. The pandemic... Proponents of the judgment that the pandemic originated with a lab leak. And that is not an award-winning sentence, but... No. It's still... They're they to- don't actually take the position that this tends to prove, or this proves that it was always bullshit that it was anything other than a lab leak. The nature of their illness hasn't been conclusively proven. Uh, Yeah. So it's just a bunch of facts we're going to line up, but we can't say what happened. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I mean, again, there's one extremely obvious explanation Now, Tim would not appreciate if we got him demonetized. No, no, no. So this is one of those things (laughs) you are able to discuss, but we probably shouldn't push out further into other questions of the medical science that YouTube would. uh, We're not questioning science. We're questioning the Wall Street. We're We're questioning the Wall Street. When when I talk about the medical science, too, I think, well... There, there are certain elements of it that you're not allowed to discuss because that's, you know, uh, how science works. But I know that with this, the establishment is actually starting to admit that this is clearly true. That's what I'm thinking. And this is what the vibe I get. It, it seems like people are like, OK, we've kind of figured out what happened. And now these news organizations, I don't want to speak for all of them, but the ones that relied for so long on printing newspaper are failing. They don't have the income that they used to have in their they need to get to break the story. So one of them is going to be like, you know what? We're done with pretense. Print it. Print it first. Print it before mm. the New York Times. Print it before whoever USA Today. Just print it first. We'll be the guy now. Yeah, I, so, I think you're right. There is a in news media. There's a lot of be there first as fast as you can. And and also, this is not a Democrat centric story as such. Mm-hmm. This is the Uniparty. This is the deep state. This is the administrators. This is the big government. So that there's a little bit more room for that kind of reporting it's not like reporting on the bidens yeah yeah and it actually makes the u.s government look kind of bad which might be good for other countries so who's behind this news propaganda i don't know you have to research who owns the wall street journal then right i wonder how much money blackrock's put into the wall street journal let's find Hmm. out that's a good question yeah please look that up for us right now because that's uh certainly valuable information I, i mean i think i've pretty much made my point on this that the the explanation here from the get-go was unbelievably obvious we've had a a number of different people in media and uh in you know the the channels of the united states government and actual like uh, official institutions that people look to as authorities throughout this entire pandemic come out and say that they were not either being honest with us from the beginning but maybe a better way of putting it is saying they weren't being truthful because that doesn't necessarily demand that we believe that they are being intentionally dishonest just that what they were saying clearly wasn't true so there are certain see i got the lawyer the lawyer the lawyer appreciates me saying that because you just hit on something that i actually had wanted to say before but Mm -hmm. i've forgotten which was Mm -hmm. misinformation Mm. information they want you to miss oh i like that thank you misinformation is a made-up word there's disinformation disinformation is an affirmative attempt to lie to you Mm -hmm. about reality so that you, for policy reasons, for political yep. reasons, okay. Misinformed. I was misinformed. They told me the show started at seven. It starts at eight. Mm-hmm. Someone made a mistake, or even someone did it on purpose. I was misinformed. There was never such a thing as misinformation. I mean, there might have been the formative might have existed theoretically, but misinformation is something that was created in the social media era as a term to describe what might not be true. What, what might not be truth, but to make it sound like those who repeat it are engaged in disinformation because it rhymes with and it alludes to disinformation. But accusing someone of disinformation is almost saying that they're competent state actors or something. Mm. You don't want to say that. You want to say rather that they're interesting. They're yeah. So that that's what a lot of what we're talking about. That's the theme. And you mentioned this. You sort of mentioned it earlier. The idea is to get across an official narrative. And to put to marginalize anyone who departs from it as being engaged in a in misinformation, not in misinforming people. Because when you misinform people, it's like I said, I thought the movie started at nine. Yeah, Sorry. exactly. Uh, people make mistakes. No, it's because you're bad. Yeah. No, I th- I think that's a, a very good point. It's a very good way of, of looking at it. Thank you. Uh, I think what everyone has to remember here is 
the media, you know, social media platforms and basically everyone in government, including people in government who are actually colluding with social media companies to have them censor people from those platforms were claiming that their interest was in protecting the American people. Now, if it's true that you are genuinely just a seeker of truth who wants to use the best information available to protect people, then when your track record ends up revealing that you have been consistently incorrect about important details, which you punish people for speaking truth on, you'd imagine some kind of humility would be demonstrated and you would loosen your grip over the control of informational uh, flow or you would loosen your restrictions and on some things they have. However, they still act with a degree of authority and certainty, which is not only unearned, but what which has been thoroughly dismissed and refuted by the facts i would say has been entirely undermined uh by their own track record it's either that it's it, that they were uh incompetent or malicious and mm -hmm. either way i'm concerned with that's why i just don't buy anything at face value anymore it's really eroding my will to live i will admit oh dude like on a yeah like it's, it's just happening slowly like piece by piece is coming out of me stone by stone i'm like i'm i'm, I'm it's getting dark like the future i, I don't see a good future in 10 years with this AI revolution and the amount of stranglehold that the U S government seems to be trying to keep on people. Like it just admit it sometimes, you know, like let it out of let mm. people live and thrive. Otherwise I can't imagine anything good happening in the next five years geopolitically. I mean, not, not nothing, but I'm saying I, I don't, I mean, if, 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 if people, if they're willing to shut off people's bank accounts that are trying to live off the grid, like what the hell are we doing to ourselves? Mm. I'm very concerned, man. And by the way, the Vanguard Group owns 18% of News Corp, which owns uh, the company that we were just talking mm -hmm. about, Wall the Street Wall Street Journal. Journal. Yeah, Vanguard. Yeah, man. Um, I, I hear a lot of what you're saying, and I think there are a lot of people in the audience who probably feel similarly about seeing a very bleak future ahead of them. But I mean, don't lose your will to live over it. Say, you this you, you matter. I mean, you matter Grimcast. as a person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Grimcast. Well, no, Ian, but Ian, like you, 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 that might be part of it. It's too much coffee. Too I much coffee. But maybe cast Maybe you just got so black pulled by that information. It, and about I will say, Vanguard. if you work in news media and you just consume these stories back to back to it's back true. to back to back, it's it is, true. It is easy for it to become like you do. You you, you have to research dark. for the show. It gets really dark. On the other hand, you have to remember all the things that happen in your daily life that are worth continuing to push against the system for. Yeah. Yeah, man. So. Man, I, I, I don't, it's just like a psychology hour. I, if I have kids, what are they going to be 20 years old and shipped off to the military to fight some war or, or like a defensive nuclear war, like against robots? What? If well, you, if you in decide order... not to push back, I mean, that's part of a part of self-determination, right? Like you have the free will to be actively present in the life you have right now and to do what you can to make the world uh, a place that you would want to pass down to your children. I think yeah. you have to resist giving up. Yeah, man, because you can't lose hope. The, the, the establishment actually thrives off of you not having hope. When the people they're trying to subjugate don't see a path forward, that's when they win. That's when they win. And that's part of the attack on religion. Yep. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. The attack on religion and the attack on the family as well. You mentioned something about children. Again, I don't have any kids, but from every single parent I've ever spoken to, it sounds to me like like choosing to have children is a tremendous act of hope. You're, you're hoping that there will be a better future. You're, you're being optimistic and saying, I'm going to bring life into this world because I think it's going to be a good thing that that I did it. Was uh, You mentioned to us before the show that you renewed your faith in your early 20s. Was this idea of hope and having a path forward something that did that for you? That's a good question. I mean, really, you know, growing up in, in what's considered to be a secular Jewish environment, although it was very strongly ethnic because of the immigrant component of my parents and my, and grandparents, you know, and then finding myself as someone whose own parents had not gone to college and all of a sudden I was at Princeton. So I was in the very precipice of... What, in an elite school. A, yeah. An elite school and sort of supposedly the entree into the elite of the world, which is not what I learned much, much later was that these schools mostly perpetuate networks. They're not there to invite you into their network. Although if you want to de-self yourself enough to mm. really be a member of the club, you de -self could. De-self yourself. Well, that, well, but that was precisely, that's yep. actually a Jane Coleman. That's my wife's, that is my wife's phrase. Not that she ever uses it. You know what Woodrow Wilson said? The purpose of academia is to make a man as little like his father as possible. Yes. And uh, that's why his name has been stripped off every building in Princeton. <laughs> Ironically, I think enough. that's honestly, I think that's the one thing he said they'd probably love. Right, but not yeah, not, not exactly. They moved away name. from their ideological father. But the answer to the question is yes. I mean, uh, uh, 
looking at looking at this strong identity that I had, and then looking at what really assimilating really meant, and the fact that I knew that I I, I had an, an an inherent belief in God and in the validity of the Jewish tradition as being something that was valid and meaningful to me. It, what I did was I went to uh, I went to Israel to study and became much more knowledgeable about my mm. heritage, and actually took a couple of years between graduating law school and starting my career, my what would eventually become legendary legal career. <laughs> um, to uh, did uh, did did, did religion Talmud. bring some humility to you? Uh, imagine uh, what it was like before. <laughs> Can you just imagine? <laughs> I don't think I can. No, actually, it, it, well, it, there's not all that's much more humbling than being 25 years old and have a degree from Princeton and from law school in Northwest. Yeah, that sounds really humbling, man. And No, no, no. And then going to a <laughs> beginner's yeshiva in Israel Oof. and learning basically the ABCs. Yeah. You know, stuff that my kids learned when they were seven and eight. Yeah. So that was, but the humbling... Um, Effect did pass, yes. Yeah, no, of course. Well, <laughs> and, and I'll, I'll I'll mention this, and I think we could have a, re a really fascinating uh, discussion about this and about uh, religion and faith on the after show. But this is one thing a lot of people are deprived of is a religious education because parents say, you know, I want to let my kid choose when they're older. Your kid's gonna make a choice when they're older, regardless. Give them an inheritance. Give mm -hmm. them a faith. Teach mm -hmm. them something so that if they do choose it, they don't have to start from square one like they're they're like a little kid learning it all for the first time. And my friend from Princeton Day. Yoram Hazoni writes in his books about national conservatism mm -hmm. and about conservatism. People are under a misapprehension. They think, well, why should my child be exposed to our particular religion? Mm -hmm. Sure, he has to have a religious education, but what makes our family's tradition any more valid? Stop asking a stupid question. Okay? <laughs> it's your family's tradition. It's what made you who you are. Do you like your parents? Do you like your grandparents? If you don't, it's probably because of Freud. Throw that stupid ass tradition out the window. Based. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we agree on that. We definitely agree on but throwing we, Freud we, out. We, we can save more. Yeah, of this and for I, the I think we'll save more of it. Well, one thing I would say to Subscribe. people too is like when you start learning about like Christianity and Catholicism and decide to become Catholic, then don't don't well, you know feel free to to not do the same thing. You're going to be a contentious show. I just knew that blame the Jews card would be played. We'll talk I, I about it on myself. the after show. We'll talk about it on the after let, show. Let me give you a touch, wanna, a touch yeah, yeah. more of the black pill before, and yeah, maybe yeah. we can carry the rest on to the after show. Because the next story is a black pill, so, so let's I, get both of them I gained once. a faith in God 10 years ago or mm -hmm. so, 15 years ago. I started to feel it. I was like, okay, cosmic microwave background radiation, radio telescopes can see this web of, of radiation. I'm like, maybe this is God or part of, maybe I'm seeing like an after effect of it or something. But then I'm like, okay, the last week I was like, oh, geez, good and evil. People are like, good triumphs over evil. And all the movies, good triumphs over evil. And I'm like, you know what? I think most of the time evil triumphs over good because it's willing to destroy. And then it just tells people it was the good guy. And I think that's the history of humanity. So even if you believe in God and all these things that we're supposed to believe in and have faith, it's like, then what? We're going to perpetuate this cycle of evil taking over again and then brainwashing everyone to think that they were the good guys. Again. Wrong! Oh, it's so pessimistic. We'll get into it on the after show. Thank you. Yeah. We'll get into it on the after show because we have, we have other black pills that I have to oh, feed people right now. Otherwise, I'd want to stay on this topic. So we will flesh it out later. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.